In this question, we have a rod constrained between two walls and a distributed torque applied in a midsection between B and C. The question is asking, what is the angle of twist between points A and B? And it wants it in degrees. To get started, let's look at one of the constitutive relationships that we've discussed in the course, which is that we can relate the angle of twist between two points to the internal torque times the length of that region all over JG. That is, of course, assuming that the torque, the internal torque in that region is constant. Now, we don't know the internal torque TAB, so that is something that we need to, to calculate. And to get us started in that calculation, we can look at the external equilibrium of the system. So we can say, here's a rod that we have here. Here's the reaction torque from the wall on the top, TD. There is going to be an external load, and we can essentially create an equivalent torque that we'll call TD times L2, okay, just by looking at the length over which we have this distributed torque. Right? So TD times L2 will give us this external torque applied to the midsection. And then we have a reaction torque at the bottom, as shown here. This reaction torque TA is going to be the same as the TAB that we have in this section. So TAB is equal to TA, and now we can say from equilibrium that TA is going to be equal to this TDL2 minus the TD. How do we go further? Well, we don't know what this T sub capital D is, and our approach is going to be used superposition. This is an indeterminate problem because we have an equation of equilibrium, the one given by TA equals TD L2 minus TD, or TAB could is equal to TA either way, but you see that we have one equation of equilibrium, yet we have two unknowns, namely the left side and T sub capital D. So with an indeterminate problem, there are multiple ways to solve it. We could uh, focus mostly on geometric compatibility, or we can use superposition. So with superposition, we break the problem into two separate subproblems, where we have a distributed torque being applied to one problem here, one subproblem, and we have a torque on the top, this TD being applied to the problem without the distributed torque. So what we have is an opportunity to figure out what the angle of twist just due to this torque might be. And then we have an opportunity to figure out what the angle of twist of the whole rod again is with respect or from a reaction torque being applied on the top <clears throat> such that these angles of twists are going to be canceling each other out. So if I had drawn phi d2 the other direction, then I would have just said that phi d2 is equal to phi d1, but since I drew it in the same direction, we have that phi d1 plus phi d2 is going to be equal to zero. And um, we can then hearken a little bit further unto geometric compatibility and realize that this phi d1 is going to be equal to phi cb1 plus phi ba1. So what are we talking about? Well, the ones are going to be what we use to designate these two subproblems, like we see here. And um, of course, the phi c relative to b would be describing the angle of twist um, between b and c in this mid-region. And then the phi BA is describing the angle twist here. Note that this phi BA1 is not equal to the angle twist that we're looking for in the final problem. This is just for the subproblem. Let's go ahead and uh, copy things over onto another page and uh, start to break things down further. Um, let's go ahead and label ABCD and the lengths 
L1, L2, L3. I regret having not just made this L1, L2, and L3 up here. Nonetheless, I'm being consistent with what um, I wrote in the problem. So uh, we've now uh, got um, some lengths, some points. Let's go ahead and add the distributed torque. On the previous page, that was T lowercase uh, T sub lowercase d. Um, right now, we'll just call it lowercase t. Okay, for this distributed load that has units, of course, of newton meters per meter. When we think about the uh, the uh, the question of how do we calculate phi b a one? All right. Once again, we can hearken to a uh, constitutive relationship that we've um, that we've described and in this case um, what we'll say is that there's going to be a torque okay inside a b in this region and uh, that torque right times uh, a length uh, divided by jg would give us this angle twist the torque inside here um, is actually going to be equal to this lowercase t times the length l2 okay so just like we did when we were looking at the external equilibrium we can figure out what this uh, kind of uh, effective con contribution to the system is by just multiplying the distributed torque times this length so that's the internal torque that we have here what's the length though of the ab region well that's l3 and we're going to put it over a jg like we see there and uh and so now um, we've got an opportunity to um, to write out uh, what uh, what phi b a one might be, okay, which will then add to a phi c b. Before we get to the phi c b, all right, let's come over to uh, the phi d two, okay. Now notice that these are in opposite directions. What am I, what are these? Uh, this TD is in the opposite direction of, of phi two. And we can once again use this constituent relationship where if we know the internal torque and we know the length of the region um, and we know J and G, the polar moment of inertia and the shear modulus, we can go ahead and we can relate the torque to the, um, the angular displacement. So here, what we see is that the torque t sub capital d all right this one times the length l1 plus l2 plus l3 all over jg and a negative sign in front of it is going to be equal to phi d2 the negative sign is because we've drawn them in opposite directions now going to phi c b1 all right let's take a look there that's there's another constituent relationship we can use we have c b with a distributed torque acting on it. And that means that we should use the integral form of Hooke's law for torsion. And so if we know what the internal torque is, and that's gonna be non-constant, it's gonna be a function of uh, the, the distance from B going to C or vice versa. And uh, we have the JG, so cross-section properties and material properties, uh, we can do an inter we can take an integral of this quantity with respect to x to figure out what the overall angular displacement will be between two points. For equilibrium, let's take a look at what's what's happening and what are we talking about? Equilibrium between a and b. All right, so this is uh, going here, and we take a slice. Um, no, 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 no. Sorry, not between a and b. We're looking at the equilibrium between B and C, sorry. So we're gonna take a slice here, all right? Um, so uh, we have a torque on the bottom, okay? That's the TA1, right? That's uh, being applied from the wall on the system. And uh, we go up some distance, all right, to B. And then this slice is in between B and C, as we said. And then there's some distributed torque, lowercase t, acting on that portion. And we can say, all right, I'm going to go from where the distributed torque starts. So at point B, and I'm going to call that going upward X. So uh, if we uh, look at uh, the, uh, the uh, summation of the torques, and this is actually an internal, um, I mean, you can uh, uh, kind of see that 
we have, oh, sorry, no, 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 this is, uh, sorry. Uh, okay, if we look um, at the external equilibrium, all right, on this, on this uh, bar over here, on this rod here, we have a TL2, all right, which is uh, this T times L2, that's that effective torque, all right, from the distributed torque minus uh, the TA1, right? That would be the reaction. So we have TA1 is equal to TL2. So now we can plug that or use that TA1 uh, when we perform our internal equilibrium calculation. Sorry for the confusion. So I was confused. So we have uh, the internal torque TI, okay, that we're going to call being um, the internal torque uh, in between B and C. And we have this distributed torque and we have this external torque on the system. Now we perform equilibrium and we see that we have TI acting in the same direction as lowercase t. And uh, that's going to be uh, times x, so how far up away we are from B, okay, that's the x, minus this external load, torque TA1, okay, this torque here on the bottom. And so we can solve for the internal torque. So Ti is going to be equal to Ta1 minus Tx. That's what we are going to throw in this equation over here. So now we take the integral of this quantity. Uh, Ta1, we also solve down here as Tl2. So that's here minus Tx. Went from 0 to L2, and we're going to take the integral with respect to x. And we just move the, the 1 over Jg outside. Um, so what does this uh, integral yield? It yields uh, that we have lowercase t L2 squared all over 2jg. We've got phi c b1 right over here, and we've got uh, phi ba1 over here. So uh, we can write an expression for phi d1. So this is the amount that the top of the bar would be, the top of the rod would be twisting just from this distributed load. And it's the amount we want to twist back with a reaction torque from the top wall such that the effective displacement at this end, at the top, is equal to zero. So here is our expression for uh, TD. What, 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 what did we do here? Well, we said, uh, we recalled that we had that phi D1 plus phi D2 is equal to zero, right? So that means that we can add this plus this to each other, okay? And uh, we have, you know, there's a negative sign here, and so we can put TD times this whole thing equal to this thing, right, without the negative sign. So then we divide by uh, the L1 plus L2 plus L3. That's what you see in this denominator here. And the JGs cancel out. So TD is this expression right here. And if we substitute in the uh, lowercase t, that value that was given in the problem for, uh, as t sub lowercase d, all right, the expression looks like this. We're at an exciting moment. Why? Because now we had this indeterminate problem and we solved for the reaction torque at the top, which means that we can figure out what the reaction torque on the bottom is. And if we go back to the previous slide, what we had drawn here, right, is that with external equilibrium, we had our TD, our TA, and our TDL2. We can calculate out, now that we have TD and we have TDL2, what TAB is. And if we know TAB, then we can figure out what phi BA is. And that's what, was, that's what we're searching to find uh, to answer this question. So phi BA is equal to this quantity times, uh, well, there's an L3 over JG. Um, TD from the previous, uh, and T, that's T uh, sub capital D from the previous uh, page is this expression here, which is dependent on the T 
uh, sub lowercase d, all right, and these lengths as described. And uh, there's one thing we have not uh, calculated, which is j. So if you read this problem, and I, of course, I didn't read it, well, of course, but I didn't read the whole problem before we started. Um, it says that uh, we have a polar moment of inertia that's uniform across the length of the pole, and the material of the pole has a shear modulus of 70 gigapascals. Great, so that's going to be the G. The outer radius of the pole is 2.9 centimeters, and the inner radius is 1.9 centimeter. So it has a constant polar moment of inertia, and <clears throat> it's actually hollow because okay? it says that there's an inner radius. And maybe the writer of this problem, uh, me, could have uh, been more clear saying this is a hollow um, uh, pole, okay? But it's a, it's a fire pole, okay, that Jumbo the Elephant's using. And, uh, and it, it just doesn't make much sense to, to, to use uh, a pole that is um, solid metal <clears throat> for that application. Uh, for the loads of a firefighter sliding down it uh, and the diameter that it typically is, it's not going to need to be um, uh, uh, solid. Okay, uh, so uh, the J, all right, back to that, we got a little distracted. Jumbo came out um, with, a, with a statement here, Jumbo the elephant. Uh, and, and so with, with here, uh, we have that j is equal to pi over 2 times quantity c uh, to the fourth for the outer, that's using the outer radius, minus ci, which would be the inner radius, the 1.9 centimeters to the fourth. Okay, so let's go ahead. That's a, that's a, like three equations that we're going to combine. And there are enough variables and parameters here that I think that using Colab is not a bad idea. So for that, let's uh, let's 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 uh, let's create a new script. Okay, and uh, we'll go ahead and import NumPy as MP. And maybe I'll make a mistake, so I'll separate it out and I'll run that. So that's good. Um, here, let's see, uh, I don't have much space, but uh, we have a number of parameters. Okay, L3 is right there. Okay, good. I, I can see all the numbers now at least. So um, we have a, an L1, which is going to be equal to one meter. We have an L2, which is going to be equal to 1.3 meters. We have an L3, which is going to be equal to 1.5 meters. We have, um, let's see, moving backwards, we have a TD, a T a lowercase d. Uh, well, we'll just do it like that, TD, that's fine. Um, and that's gonna be uh, 1804, and that has units of newtons per meter, just like that. And we have a shear modulus of 70 gigapascals. Okay. Um, the outer uh, radius C naught or C zero co is going to be 2.9 centimeters. The inner radius CI, we'll call it, is going to be 1.9 centimeters. And what else? Do we have all the numbers? I think we might have all the numbers. So let's go ahead and figure out what J is. That's going to be Oops, times C0, C0 to the fourth minus C internal to the fourth. Okay, fine, I'll take you on that. That's that's nice of you to give me a little bit of a break. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and, I guess, start um, uh, on these other two equations. So we'll do the big TD. So we'll say TD is equal to T lowercase d, yes, we're a little confusing, times L2 times L3 plus L2 squared divided by 2. And then this is all divided by L1 plus L2 plus L3, like that. Okay. And um, uh, now we have our phi ba. So phi ba 
is going to be equal to <coughs> um, quantity t lowercase d times L2 minus capital T D okay, uh, times, let's see, uh, times L3 all over J times G. Did I do this right? Um, it looks pretty good. All right, and we will go ahead and print uh, that uh, the phi BA is going to be equal to, I'll we'll do some rounding uh, um, on the, oops, I thought it was helping me out. What happened? MP round. Wow, oh, that, that thing is disturbing. Um, uh, it, it's just in my face. I guess um, that's just how I have things set up. Let's maybe we'll open up a little bit here more so it's not so intrusive. Um, and we're going to multiply by 180 over pi to get us into degrees. And sure, I'll take you up on those on those uh, requests, on those helps. Let's see. Did I get it? Oh, okay. Um, it says here that the angle of rotation is 5.32 degrees. All right. Um, What is uh, disturbing here is that I know that, that I don't think that's the right answer. So we have one, let me see what I did, one, L2, 1.3, L3 is 1.5, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, TD is that, 70, um, 2. Ah, that's where it is. It's 2.9. All right. Some of you might have been screaming through the screen. No, you put in the wrong number. Um, 1.38. That actually also I don't think is quite right. Let me see what else I might have done. 1.5. This is right. This is correct. TD is equal to this, and oh yeah, no, that's this is correct. This is this is correct. Okay, so um, uh, anyway, uh, sorry for that the hiccup there, but uh, um, I hope you you found this uh, example uh, interesting and and useful. And um, uh, it, it's, uh, it's a tough problem, this one. There were a number of steps, and it shows us how to use the principle of superposition for indeterminate problem with torsional loading. It also highlights how to use a distributed torque and, and handle that um, on a, uh, a, a loaded bar. And um, it also explains how to handle the, uh, the polar moment of area for a, a hollow bar. Okay, and that's, that part is not too complicated, but by taking the difference of the, um, the radii to the fourth power, that is essentially allowing us to remove the internal material that would have otherwise been there. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, and, um, and if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you. Bye-bye.